Name. What is the HTML tag name used to create a drop down list in a HTML page? The page select any drop down list, any web page created using a tag name called select. We know a drop down list will provide a set of items. Items are created using a tag name called what is the tag name? What is the tag name? Select option. No, no, no. Items I'm talking about. Option is a HTML option. tag name used to define items of a drop down list. Well, the Selenium provided a class. Selenium given one class to work with a drop down list element. What is the class name? Select class. These select class provide a set of predefined functions. What are the most commonly used functions of Selenium select class? Select by index, index. Value. select by value, select by visible text, get options. All these are non-static methods of this class. We know in order to access non-static methods of any Java or Selenium class, we must create a object for the class. Well, a web page may contain multiple drop-down list element. Select the country, one drop-down list. Select the state one drop down list. Select the city one drop down list. We observed in Facebook application while creating an account, it is asking a date of birth, date given as one drop down list, month given as another drop down list, year given as another drop down list. In Primus Bank application while creating a branch, select the country, state, and city also given. Finally, one page may contain multiple drop down list element. So while creating an object for Selenium select class, we have to supply the drop-down list web element as a constructor. This select class object belongs to this particular drop-down list need to be mentioned. While creating an object for Selenium select class, we have to supply the web element, drop-down list web element as an input argument so that Selenium understand, okay, this select class object belongs to this particular drop down list element so that whatever the methods we use will be executed on the given drop down list element. If there are about two drop down lists in my page, select a country, select a city, I have to create two select class object. If there are three drop down list elements available in a page, like select a date, one drop down list, selecting the month, another drop down list, selecting the year, another drop down list, we have to create three select class objects one to work with the day drop down list another one to work with the month drop down list similarly one more select class object to work with the year drop down list right in order to pick up a value from a drop down list element there are some methods available in the selenium select class what are the method names in order to pick up select a value from a drop down list there are few methods available in the selenium select class what are the method names select by index one method Select by visible text one method. Select, select by value another method. Select by index, select by value, select by visible text. Let me repeat the how to select a value from a drop down list with another example, then we go with the remaining things. Yesterday I have explained this on Facebook date of birth creation. To demonstrate this topic, I'm creating a sample drop down list element. I am creating a sample drop down list element. I am creating some HTML code. 
selective HTML tag name used to define a drop down list element. See, we no need to prepare the HTML code for your understanding. I am creating a sample page. Okay. Select. I'm giving some property here. ID equal to say, for example, cars. A drop down list will have a list of items. Option is a HTML tag name used to define uh, items of a drop down list. Some online team yes, member sir. makes a noise. Praveen? I'm creating some list of options, car names. Say for example, say BMW one option. Giving value property is not mandated, it's optional. In the desktop, I'm saving this file, say, demo.html. This output of my code. I created a very simple example drop down list element here. The value property is mandatory. Did I given any value property for this element? No. Some element may have, some options may have value property, may not have value property. Generally, when the programmer will go for value property. I can create a short values here the value equal to say B. Value equal to say B, V for Volvo. Value equal to say H. Value equal to say A. Here I have given value property. Just some description I'm giving, some lengthy description I'm giving. Something, whatever it may be. We have some lengthy description, that is our jumpshot. We have some lengthy description, that is our jumpshot. So now here, I want to pick up a value I mean, we'll do one thing. I'll add one more option.
this is the output of my code. This is the URL, HTML page, HTML file. Your code will accept that HTML application. I'm running this code. Now, I want to select the very first car available in the drop down list, whatever it may be. I do not know what is the first car. The requirement I want to make Selenium to choose the very first car available in the drop down list. Let's say there are list of cars. I want to make Selenium to select the very first car in the list. In order to work with a drop down list element, we must create a to perform any action on a drop down list element, we must create a Select object class. for what? Select class. Object for uh... linear select class. Yes. Not this one. In the selenium.support.ui package, we have a class called select. We have to create an object for the selenium select class. While creating an object for the Selenium select class, we have to supply the drop down list element as a constructor. It's asking the element. This drop down list element we have to supply as a constructor. There is ID property available for the element. ID property value is cars. We created a select class object for the drop down list element. Here your select class object name is car. Car dot. I want to pick up the very first car available in the drop down list element. Tell me what is the method. My requirement I want to build the code to select very first car available in the list. List. Select by index. Select list. by index. There are three methods available in the Selenium select class to select a value from a drop down list. Select by index one method. Select by value one other method. Select by visible text another method. Here, as per my requirement, I want to pick up the very first car in the list. I do not know what is that car name. Whatever the first car, that first car need to be selected. Which method we can use? Select by index. Select by index. Select by index. Select index. Select index. Get zero. If you want to select an item from a drop down list based on its position, item value can be anything I do not know. First value I want to select. Last value I want to select. The tenth value I want to select. The fourth value I want to select. Here I have to go for index. Select by index. Tell me. Position. Zero, sir. Zero will one. select select a card. One. One, sir. One. Here. Zero option is select a card. If I don't have select a card option, I agree with you, we can go for select by index zero. Here I have the first option is select a card. I want to select the first car, not select a car. I have to go for one as per this drop down list design. If I don't have select a car, I agree with you, we have to go for select by index zero. Here I'm giving one. These three methods I have discussed yesterday on the same example, date of birth. It selected the very first value available in the drop down list, the BMW. Select by index zero will select select a car. 
select by index one, we'll select BMW, two, three, and four. If I want to pick up the last value, definitely I'll go for select by index four here. So if you want to select a value from a drop-down list element based on its position, irrespective of its value, we have to go for select by index. Then, now I want to select Honda car from the list. I do not know its position. There are about 100 cars in the list. Wherever it is available, I want to select the Honda car from the list. What is the method we use? Select by visible text. Select by visible text. Value or visible text. Value meaning the short code. I want to select the value, nothing but this one. Here we have some value property, right? If I use select by value, H, Honda will be selected. No, I want to select based on the complete text visible on the option. I have to go for select by visible, visible text. Select by visible text. I given a Honda. Wanted I given a mistake here. H is available in uppercase there. But here wanted I given in the lower case. You get an exception now, no such element exception. We get an exception, no such element exception. This time I given the, I mean, visible text, Honda, the Honda will be selected. <clears throat> right? Now, I want to select the car, Audi. If I go with visible text, what is the text I have to give? If I go with visible text, what is the text I have to give? Audi A3 sedan is better than. Audi, a white space, A3, a white space, sedan, a white space, is a white space. complete value I have to give. Instead, I observe there is a short code available here. What is that value? A for Audi. So uh, there is a lengthy description in place of lengthy visible text, I can also go with alternatively value to pick up a value from a drop down list. Select by value. What are, if value property available, then only I can go with value. If no value, we have to go with either index or visible text. As value available, we have an option to go with value. Finally, there are three methods available in the Selenium select clause in order to pick up a value from a drop-down list element. Select by index, select by visible text, select by value. Hope you understood when to use these methods. Right. Online team, hope it's clear, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You answer me now. If I run this code, what happens? If I run this code, what happens? Audi will select, sir. No. First, it will select BMW. Value available at the first position. Then it will select Honda. Then finally, it will select Audi. One by one, all operations are performed. But... I implement thread dots if then only you can observe what is happening. Otherwise, very quickly it will pick up the values. We may not be able to observe what is happening. Only for our understanding, I'm implementing thread dots, which is actually not required. All methods will be executed one after another. First, BMW will be selected. It waits for two seconds. Then Honda will be selected. Again, wait for two seconds. Then finally, Audi will be selected. Audi 
after two seconds, after two seconds, audio was selected. Got it? Now. This drop down list is a single select drop down list. This drop down list is a single select drop down list, meaning single select drop down list, meaning at any given point of time, user can select only one item from the drop down list. You see, in some application, we have a chance to select multiple values from a drop down list, multi selection. Supposing in Naukri.com, you are searching for the jobs. It is asking select a city or cities. I can choose two cities. It will show you jobs available in the selected two cities. If really your drop down list is a multi selection drop down list, I want to select multiple values. How to do that? Let me make this drop down list is a multi selection drop down list. If the programmer want to make the drop down list as a multiple selection drop down list in HTML code, there's a keyword called multiple. If the keyword multiple is used, automatically this drop down list behaves like a multi selection drop down list. I can select multiple values. And removing this, select a card. Good. I'll run this code, you tell me what happened. Okay, I'll change the value to zero because select a car, I have removed it. Zero meaning now BMW is zero position. If I run this code, tell me what happened. Your code selecting multiple values. Previously, it is a single select drop down list. At any given point of time, only one item can be selected. It selected only one item. Now the drop down list is a multiple selection drop down list. Automatically, it is selecting the multiple values. You don't have a separate method in Selenium select class to choose multiple values. If the drop down list allowing you to choose multiple value, I mean, put up what are the multiple values you want to pick up. Got it? All right, team, you understood the last point what I highlighted? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There is no separate method for selecting multiple values. If the drop down list allowing you to choose multiple value, if you select two values, the two value will be selected. If you select four values, the four values will be selected like this. In the same code, if I executed on a single select drop down list, one by one items will be selected. When your code picking the second item, the first item will be replaced with the second item. If the drop down list allowing the user to choose multiple values, automatically the code will be selecting multiple values from a drop down list. Now, I want to count number of items in it and I want to pin all of them. Yes, how to count the number of items in a drop down list? Get the option. All items are created using a tag name called option. See, yesterday we built some code to handle the Ajax components. If there is no ready made method called get options, what I can do? Tell me what we can do. If there is no ready-made method get option, what we can do? We'll make Selenium to identify the parent element. What is the parent element? Select. Dot find elements by the tag name option. Actually, same code available in the get options method. Instead of you write the code to get the option, there is a ready-made function available called get options. We'll read all options into the Java list.
here. Chakra, mute yourself. Car is a select class object. There's a method called get options. One moment. Only to explain you the multiple selection. I use a keyword multiple, I'm removing it now. Though it is there, no issue. Get options returns a list of web elements. A list of web elements. Here my Java list name is car list. All options belongs to the drop down list will be taken into a Java list. The car list or size will return you count of items in it. There are totally four items in it. The count is four here. I want to print all of them. We have to go for a loop. I don't have select a call. I want to access the element from the zeroth position. What, what type of data available in the Java list here? Web element. Each web element, I mean, I want to access the element first. Elements available. I wanted the text property of the element. Get the text, text of it. This I'm keeping in a variable, say, car name. Let us print that car name. These are the three available. So this is what I have explained yesterday on the other example. Same I have repeated with one more example. You can practice on any drop-down list concept is same. Any drop-down list in any web page created using a HTML tag name called select. Any drop-down list element will have some list of items. The items are created using a tag name called Items are defined using a tag name called option. In order to work with a drop down list element, Selenium provided select class, select class provided some method, select by index, select by visible text, select by value, and also get options. Now, let us build the code to verify the items present in a drop down list. First, we'll write the code in this way. A list, I mean, drop down list will have a list of items. I want to check a specific item present in the drop down list or not. How to do that? A drop down list will have a list of items. I want to verify a specific item available in the drop down list or not. Supposing in Primus Bank application, I created a new branch. The newly created branch appear in the login section. In a, there's a drop down list, right? Select a branch. The newly created branch must appear in the Drop down list, select a branch. Already 10 branches are available. While logging, the user will select a branch and login. I created a new branch, 11th one. The 11th one must appear in the drop down list. So, anywhere you want to build some code to verify the given item present in the drop down list or not, how to build the code.
here somewhere we have background option. I'm not getting it. Here it is, sorry. Yes, you tell me the logic. How to check a particular item present in the drop down list or not? Maybe not only drop down list. Maybe it is a HTML table, it may be anything. Your Java list, your Java list has a list of items. Finally, using get options, we read all the web elements, optional elements, and we are storing finally in a Java memory called Java list. How to check a particular item present in the Java list or not? I already explained. Contains, sir. Contains. I already explained this code. While explaining Java list, how to check the same example I have given, I think, how to be verified something. Right, possible by something. How to check right. a particular item available in the drop down list or not? Let us build the code to check a given item available in the drop down list or not. I'll write the code on Amazon application. Now here, I have some drop down list element here. Now remember, this topic we'll discuss. These kind of alerts, browser notifications, you no need to handle. Without handling this browser notification, you or your Selenium also can able to interact with the elements. There will be some pop-ups. Without handling them, you cannot perform any action on the page. We received an alert here, pop-up. Without suspending the pop-up, you cannot perform any action on the page. Try to click somewhere in the page. About as personal banking. Hmm? Manually you cannot do, Selenium also cannot do. This is an alert, pop-up. If really there is a pop-up coming like this, we must build Selenium code to handle this popper. Divide or switch to alert. We'll discuss about this topic. This we have to handle, whereas this browser notification, where it is? A new version, there are many usability issues. Anyhow, is that Amazon? I close it. It's not coming now. Browser notifications, you no need to worry. You no need to write the code to handle the browser notification. Your application generated alerts, you must handle. We have a separate topic, how to handle the alerts, how to handle multiple browser windows, how to handle a page inside another page called iframes. First, I mean, just we started, we are going with component by component. Still, we are learning about how to perform various actions on the drop-down list element. Here, there are many items available here. I want to build a Selenium code to verify computers present in the drop-down list or not. Computers available in the list or not, I want to write the code. So you can create a logic in different formats. There's no rule that only this is how you have to create a logic. There is a ready-made method contains. Java list provide a method called contains. Add one method, get one method, Contains also one method that verify the given item available in the list or not, or 
you can also build your own logic now i want to verify the competitors is present in the list or not i'm declaring some variable here So my variable name item to be check. Computers. This is the item available in the drop down list or not? I would like to check how to do this. At first, I create the Selenium select class object. It's Amazon category list. Cat, I have given the name equal to new select the web element this element and spying the properties of this element there is id available I given the ID property. Then you know get options will return all options of the list, drop down list. Catlist. Here, catlist is my Java list name. The item you are verifying, computers, which is a string. But what kind of data available in the list now? What kind of data available in the Java list? Elements, Elements available. Available. But here we are verifying a string. Contains will check the given element is available or not. No, I want to read the string, text property of the web element. Here I will build my own logic. Any online team member, answer me, try to answer my question. There are 55 participants in our meeting. There are about 55 people in the class, online meeting. Any one team member, will you answer my question? I'll post a very simple question. Yes, Anita, try to answer my question. Anyone? Yes, sir. What's your name? Sarup, sir. Right, Sarup. How many elements are available in the drop down list? Consider our Zoom meeting page as a list, drop down list. How many 55. elements are available in the drop down list? 55. 55. Out of 55, we are checking a particular element available in the list or not. Okay, sir. Anusha is available in the list or not, you are checking. Okay, sir. What is the logic you apply? What is the logic you apply? First, I assume the element is not. In the list. Sir, one condition is visible text. No, first I assume, first I assume the given element is not in the list. Assume Anusha is not in the list. Okay, sir. I'll declare a Boolean variable. If item present, my variable name is item present equal to false. I am assuming the item is element is not in the list. Here, 
Here, assumption, Anusha is not in the list. First, I am assuming the item is not in the list. Then, read the first element value, Suresh Babu. Compare with the item to be verified, Anusha, not matching. Second value, Venkat. Compare with Anusha, strings, not matching. The third element, not matching. The fourth element, not matching. The fifth element, not matching. Sixth element, there is a match occurred. Read the text property of each and every web element. Compare with the item to be verified. No way the condition satisfied. What is the meaning? No it's way the false. condition satisfied. What is the meaning? Finally, false. this is not in the list. Some way the condition satisfied. Yes, the item is present in the list. Make it true. Break. Will construct a loop. In i equal to 0, i less than cat list of size i plus plus. Now, Okay, temporarily I'll come in this code. Generally, mostly people assume this logic. I'll read the very first item. Cat list dot, get of i dot, get the text of it. This will compare with, compare with, the item, item to be checked. Check. If this is a condition, if this condition satisfied, I'm printing the item to be checked is present in the list test pass. Otherwise, the item to be checked is not present in the list, test paid. This is the logic I have built. Is my logic is correct? We are reading the text property of the very first element in the first iteration. Compare with item to be verified. If this condition satisfied, item is present in the list, pause. Otherwise, item not present in the list, fail. I'll run this logic, see what happens. Sir, it's not right. Sorry? Sir, it will print uh, not to be present, uh, you know, for, uh, all the number of times item it is checking. Mm. So... It, this logic won't work. It will be repeated uh, test uh, pass, uh, test fail, and it then will... one time only pass. Yes, correct. You are right. Absolutely, you are right. This is the wrong logic. There are about 26 items. 26 times it will print the values. See what happens. We are not selecting any value here. Competency is not present in the list. What is the very first item available in the list? Let me see. All departments. All departments is compared with computers. It went to L spot. What is the code in the L spot? Computers is not present in the list. Test fail. Second item also not match. Fail. Third item also not match. Fail. Fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, seventh one. At eighth position, computers available. We are getting test pass. Again, remaining also we are getting test fail. Okay, here I have one more logic here. If somewhere the condition satisfied, print test pass, no need to continue remaining iteration. We can use break. I'm using break. Okay. Little better, but still, it's not the perfect logic. 
at eighth position computer is available seven times it will print fail seven times it is printing fail at eighth position computer is available we are getting four no no i do not want the output in this way finally i want it competency is available or not available pass or fail that is output i wanted so i do not recommend this logic sir instead of equals ignore case we use uh, contains no. for contains what contains is doing contains is checking with the 28 elements contains is a string class method it is not checking in the entire list one string contain some other string in it or not in the entire string somewhere we have some value or not i would like to check then i go for contains see my logic now first i am assuming the item is not present in the list is item present false first i am assuming the item is not in the list then i am reading the first item text property comparing with item to be checked computers when this condition will satisfy if this condition satisfied me if this condition satisfied me item by in the list is available in list item is present in the list the boolean variable is item present i will make it true instead i am assuming the item is not in the list false if really this condition satisfied yes item is present in the list i am making true break now at the end of the for loop the boolean variable will have either true or false if really the item is nowhere in the list what is the value false somewhere the item is present in the list what would be the value true now if is item present if true if true if really the item is present available if true i'm printing the item to be checked is present in the list test pass otherwise the item to be checked is not present in the list test fail if really somewhere item is available in the list i'm making the boolean variable value to true break based on the boolean variable value we are making a decision whether it is in the list or not i given computers item to be verified we observed that is present in the list we should get test pass now i'm getting test pass i'm changing this want to like given something like abc the abc is not in the list we should get finally test fail only one consolidated output pass or fail available or not available the abc is not present in the list test fail this kind of logic we can build to verify the given item available in the list or not if you have any questions on this logic i'll clarify then we go further just go through the logic if you have still any question i'll clarify
contains is a string class function. A string, welcome to Google app. In the entire string Google available, then I use contains. Here we have the layer elements in the list. Yes, in Java list also provide a method called contains. String class has a function called contain. Java list also provide a method called contains to verify a string. But here I don't have strings in the list. I have the elements in the list. The alternative logic, what I can do, I'll create a Java list to store the strings, to store the strings. Web element text to property, I can again load into the Java list. Directly, I can use a function contains. Instead, another logic it is. So while writing the logic, whatever you get into mind, you can create that. Here, any dropdown list you want to check a specific item available in the dropdown list or not. Say for example, in the class, there are about 100 students. I want to check a student with a name Ramesh available in the class or not. First, I assume student is present. No, false. Totally, there are about 100 elements in the list. Get the text to property of the first web element. What is your text to property? You understand my question? What is your text to property? Your name. Right. The text to property of the first element, I'm comparing with Ramesh, not matching. Text to property of the second web element, not matching. Text to property of the third web element, not matching. Fourth web element, not matching. Text to property of the second web element, not matching. Text to property of the third web element, not matching. Fourth web element, not matching. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tenth element, text to property, Ramesh. Item to be verified also, Ramesh. I'll make the Boolean variable value two. I no need to check with the remaining 90, break. End of the for loop, the Boolean variable will have either true or false. Initially false. Nowhere Ramesh in the list. Finally, value is false only. Somewhere Ramesh in the list, value is true. If item is item present, it will have either true or false. If true, item is present in the list, test case false. Otherwise, item is not present in the list, test case will. That is the logic I build here. Got it? <coughs> No, we are using break, right? If really I'm using break, if my requirement is whether I Ramesh is present in the list or not, this logic is enough. If my requirement is how many times Ramesh is present in the list, I should not use break. I'll declare one variable integer count. In the condition, one. Next time if match is occurred, plus one. Finally, count will have two or three or zero. Have you understood what I said? Right. So previous car example have not saved. Yesterday we discussed similar kind of example. To explain this one more time, I created a sample car application kind of code. A script to check. The specified item present in the drop down list or not. A program to verify the given item present in the drop down list or not. You can change the value in any other drop down list also, you can practice it. Okay. See here. Just give me a second. I close all of these clauses.
See, I'm creating a Java list. Cat list or cat, I mean, whatever it may be. I'm adding a few sample items here. Something like this, four items I have added. Now in my Java list, there are about four elements, four items. But what is the data type? Previously, I don't have strings. Previously, I have web elements. Previously, I have web elements in the list, correct? Get option returns the web elements, not the strings. Here I have the strings. I give them something like this. The item to be checked, pens. Now, if cat list There's a ready-made function available for the Java list. Previously, I was not using a ready-made function. I built my own logic. Previously, we created our own logic. We have not used any ready-made function. There is a ready-made method available in the Java list. What is the method name? Contain. This contains is different. String class contains is different. String class contains in the entire string somewhere something available or not, I want to verify, then I go for contains. What this contains is doing? A list may contain list of items, 10, 20, 30, 40, 100. In the entire 100 item, some way the given item available or not, it is going to verify. If available, true. If not available, false. Previously, I was not used it. I created our own logic. But there is a ready-made function available for the Java list called contains. Read the description. What contains will do it is showing here. It returns true if the list contains the specified element. If the Java list contains the given element, it will return true. If not available, it will return false. The category list, there are four items here. Contains item to be verified, pens. If really the Java list contain the given element, it will return true. If true, just I'm printing test pass. Otherwise, I'm printing test fail. These are the logic, simple logic. Here I am using the ready-made function available in the Java list. Previously, I generally it's a learning process to build our own logic. I created the code like that. But there is a ready-made function available called contains a list contain the given item or not. I want to check. I can directly use a contains function. We are getting test pass because pens available. I'm giving another item here, demo something, which is not available. We get test fail. If the given item available in the Java list, true. If the given item not present in the Java list, false. Based on that, we can write the logic. You can also use this kind of logic also. Okay, one moment.
So what is your Java list name here? Cat list. If cat list contains, I'm directly using it, contains item, item to be check. Printing test path, otherwise printing test fail. Let me run this. Computer is item I have given. You answer me why we got this fail. Why we are getting test fail, you answer me. Why we are getting test fail? Is any online team member? Answer this question. Sir, computer string, uh, this computer uh, available in the list is uh, web element, sir. Previous example, Java list contains strings only. In my previous code, Java list contains strings. The item you are checking also is string. But here, what is your Java list contain? Web elements. How the web element will match with a string? But actually contains, it needs input of type object. Object meaning any type of data it allows. Contains I'm talking about. But it contains a web element. The data type available in the Java list is web element. The item you are checking is a string. Element available. Did, do you have the text property of the element in the list? Do you have the text property of the elements in the list? No. We have the elements in the list. We have web element in the list. Web element you are comparing with the string. Sir. Every time I no need to say, if there is any unnecessary noise coming, you suspend the student from the class. No need to ask me. Okay, sir. Fine. Thank you, sir. Right. Here the Java list contains the web elements. The Java list contains the web elements. The web elements we are comparing with the strings. There is no match. Code. Definitely element will not match with the string. We have the element, say for example, you know, this element has a text property, name of the marker. In the Java list, you don't have this string. In the Java list, we have the element, correct? This entire element you are matching with the, comparing with the string, which is not matching. Hence it is saying false, fail. If I want to use this contains, what is the mechanism tell me? What do you have to do? Your Java list also should contain the string. Your Java list also should contain the string. But get options, what is the return type of get options? List of elements. We are using get options method. What is the return type of the get option? List of web, web elements. elements. Web element. I cannot change it, correct? But what I can do. I have to create one more Java list here. We have to create one more Java list for what? To store the strings, text to property of the web elements. Instead of that, my previous logic is simple logic. Understand the point? For that reason, I build the logic first. Really, if I have the strings in my Java list, my code is very simple. But get options return type is a list of web elements. Again, I have to create one more Java list of type string. Read the first element text to property loading. Read the next web element text to property loading. Finally, I need to have one more Java list with the strings. For that Java list, I can use contains. Instead, the previous logic is a very simple logic.
I have to create one more Java list to store the string. For example, C list equal to new array list. Then I have to build the logic. Don't get confused. Previous logic is the simple logic. You go with that. Because not only for this, anywhere you want to verify a list contain a given element or not, your own logic will work out with respect of the data type you have. Right now, I want to build a logic in this way. I want to create a logic to verify all items are listed in alphabetical order, ascending order or not. Manually, you check and tell me whether all items are listed in ascending order or not, I would like to verify. If not showing in ascending order, not displayed in ascending order, in usability point of view, it is a bug. Supposing a drop down list has 40 items, 50 items, all items are displayed in a zigzag way. Like in primary bank application branch name, the branch names will be listed in a very zigzag manner. I want to select a value, say SR Nagar. I have to search where it is. If the items are listed in the ascending order, very quickly we can move on and pick up the item. Here the expected, any drop down list generally, if I have two, three items, the other way, if there are more items, they must visible on the ascending order. Then only user point of view, easily they can able to pick up the city, pick up the item. Now I want to build a program to verify the items present in the drop down list are listed in ascending order in alphabetical order or not. What is the logic here? Tell me. What kind of logic we have to create? There is no ready-made method for that. We have to build our own logic for that. What is the logic? A drop-down list will have list of items. A drop-down list may be having a list of items. Let's say in this drop down list, I have a list of items A, B, C, D. For example, I want to check whether all listed in ascending order or not, alphabetical order or not. What kind of logic we can create? I'll take the first item into some variable. Item one. We'll take the next item into another variable. Item two. Now, these two are of data type string. The string class provide a method. What is the method name? The string class, Java string class provide a method. What is the method name? Compare to. If you know what is compared to, then only you can able to build this logic. First, let me explain. What is this compared to? Here I'm declaring two variables of data type string, str1, str2, string2. Now, str1 equal to I'm storing some data. STR2 equal time storing another data. STR1 equal to I'm storing some data. I'm giving A. First I'll go like this. Two items, two string have same value now. Uppercase A. String two, what is the function name? Compared. Compared to another string, string one. Second string I am comparing with the first string. We'll run this code, see the output. We are getting zero. Okay, now this time,
Here I'm giving B. First A and A, zero. A and B, one. B, A. Minus one. <coughs> okay, let's see our way here. C I'm giving. D I'm giving something. Only here you try to understand what it is this compared to. It's what is compared to tell me. What compared to is doing? Here two things are same. The two things are same. For your ease of understanding, I given only one character. Later, I'll give more characters. The two strings are same. We are getting zero. C and A, we are getting two. B and A, we are getting one. Previously, we observed. A and D, we are getting minus three. You tell me what actually compared to is doing. It uh, returns. Uh, index value. It, it is giving the uh, ASCII difference. Uh, sorry, difference. It is returning the differential value of the differential ASCII ASCII code value of the two given strings. Correct. It is returning differential ASCII code value of the two given string. Every character will have a ASCII number. What is the ASCII code range for lowercase alphabets? What is the ASCII range for lowercase alphabets? No idea? No idea? ASCII code values, 97 to 122, lowercase alphabets, 65 to 90, 26, 65 to 90 for uppercase alphabets. Every character will have a ASCII value. Compared to method returns, differential ASCII code value of the two given string. A, first one, uppercase A, 65. Second one also, 65. 65 minus 65, zero. That's what it is doing. Compared to function will return the ASCII code value of the two given strings. Okay. For your understanding, I use only one character. Let me change these values now. ABC, ABC, X, Y. First two, three characters are same. Last character is change. X and Y, ASCII code values it is comparing. There's a difference is one. Is it comparing only one character or the first character? No, it is comparing all of the characters in the string, finally returning differential ASCII code value of the two given string. Fine. Now, the second item, ASCII code value, I compare with first item ASCII code value. If I'm getting a value above zero, then you get a value above zero. If I'm getting a value above zero, then you get a positive integer code. Both are same, we get zero. Second one is bigger than the first one. B66, uppercase B. Uppercase A, 65. 66, we are comparing with 65. We'll get positive integer, 1. Second one is smaller than the first one. We get negative integers. Below 0, something you get. Maybe minus 1 or minus 2 or minus 26. If I'm getting, I'll compare second string with the first string. If I'm getting a value above 0, what is the meaning? Second one is bigger than first one. Okay. Then third one, I'll compare with the second one. Again, I'm getting a value above zero. Third one is bigger than the second, second one. one. Fourth one, I'll compare with the third one. If I'm getting a value above zero, fourth one is bigger than the third one. Like nth value, I'll compare with n minus one value. If I'm getting above zero, all are listed in the order, correct? Somewhere I'm getting a minus value. 
somewhere I'm getting a negative integer. When you get negative integer, second one is smaller than the first one. Item is smaller than the previous one. Then only you get the negative integer. This logic is enough to create, to write a program to verify the items are listed in ascending order or not. Get options is taking all the options, right? 28 items available. All 28 items you are taking. Take the second one, compare with the first one. Take the third one, compare with the second one. Fourth one, compare with the, th I mean, third one. Twenty-eighth one, compare with the twenty-seven one. Always I am getting a value above zero. They are in the order. Somewhere I am getting a negative integer code. The order is missing. Simple. Let me build that logic now. Just I'm putting, giving the first program to understand what is compared to. Compared to returns, the differential ASCII code value of the two given strings. Want to make some note about it compared to? Compared to, take the notes about this, compared to, it is a string class function It is a string class function compares, okay, otherwise, returns the differential ASCII code value of the two given strings. It returns the differential ASCII value of the two given strings. The differential ASCII value of the two given strings. If both are same, it returns a zero. If both are same, it returns zero. The string you are comparing, the string you are comparing with other string, the string you are comparing with other string is bigger the string you are comparing with other string is bigger, it returns positive integer code. It returns positive integer code. If smaller, if smaller, it returns negative integer code. It returns negative integer code. It returns negative integer code. Right. The two strings are same, it will return zero. The string you are comparing is bigger than the other one, previous one. It returns a positive integer code. The string you are comparing with smaller than the previous one, it will return a negative integer code. Right. So I'll stop here today.
and tomorrow we'll extend the discussion. The same whatever I have explained is compared to we'll write on the Amazon code. In Amazon drop only we have about 28 items, whether all items are listed in the offending order or not. I'll take one more drop down list. Actually, in Amazon, all are in the list order. Actually, we'll take one more drop down list where the items are not in the order. When the same logic when I execute, if the items are in the list, it will say or in the list test pass. If the items are not in the list, it will say test cases fail. And these are last scenario related to drop down list element. Drop down list element. We are learning component by component. Text box we have covered yesterday and previous session. Send keys clear get attribute of value and when i keep something in a text box if i am getting suggestions ajax how to handle the ajax components i have discussed and the second element here it is drop down list element we are exploring all possibilities with the drop down list element tomorrow when the drop down list element is done then i explain links related automated scripts how to work with the links then check boxes radio buttons one by one we go we continue tomorrow thank you thank you online team we'll continue tomorrow